from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Caracas Police, senor. I have Jefe Velasquez returning your call. Momentito, por favor. Thanks. I have the senor Dollar, Jefe. Gracias. Uh, good morning, amigo. It is, huh? Here it is. Here it ain't. Where is there? The Alder House in La Guiara. I'm staying here at Alder's request. Ah, you are a, a how they call a, a fast mover, amigo. Felicidades. Sorry, but felicitations are a little out of place. Trouble? Someone came within inches of killing Alder last night. I've got the bullet. How's your ballistic setup? At your disposal. Just bring it in. Thanks, I will. Maybe it's got something to say. I hope you're right. But, amigo... Yeah? Don't you think is the next bullet you should be worrying about? <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Caracas, Venezuela... To the Home Office Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Alder Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Expense account item five, five dollars even. Tip to one Nachos Gomez, servant in the big Alder house. For a good reason. He hadn't liked the idea of my prowling the slope alone last night looking for someone with a gun. He'd insisted on joining me. True, we hadn't found anything, but he'd been there. Five bucks isn't much to pay for a friend, and I had a feeling I could use one. I ate breakfast alone. Alder had already gone to his office, and the rest of the house was asleep. Nacho's breakfast tray rattled when he saw the money. For me, Senor Dollar? Why? Oh, call it appreciation. You didn't have to follow me out there last night. Well, you, you could have been hurt, Senor. You don't know the slope is a long drop to the bottom. Yeah, and lumpy. I didn't expect money. I... I did not do it for that. I know that. Go ahead, take it. <laughs> Mil gracias. <laughs> uh, something... Uh, I, I, I tell you something, senor. When you go running out there last night, I was sure you would find nobody. Oh, why? Would you suffer yourself? Too much, uh, how you call it, bushes, uh, too thick. They could be standing right next to you and you wouldn't know. Then why did you come streaking out after me? I told you. It's a long way down. One wrong step and... Psst. <laughs> In the States, that's an old joke. The punchline is, watch that first step. It's a beaut. I got in the car I'd rented the previous day and headed toward Caracas. I passed the driving time pleasantly by counting oil wells. From that, I graduated to trying to figure how much money they made with each given stroke of the huge pumps. Nice kind of occupation? Sure. Specifically designed for a purpose to keep me from worrying about the business at hand, namely why super salesman Billy Alder, insured for a quarter of a million dollars, should change his beneficiaries five times in a single month. Further, who'd taken that pot shot at him last night? Answers? I went back to counting oil wells. In Caracas, I headed for police headquarters and the head man, Jefe Velasquez. He turned the bullet over to his lab, but they were shorthanded. By lunchtime, I still had no report. So I took Velasquez to lunch. For a man who is living in a house like Billy Alder's, you do not look happy, amigo. That bullet traveled an inch more to the left. Billy Alder wouldn't need a house. It's a good point. You look too serious for a nice lunch. I fixed that. Hey, dame dos pisco sour, por favor. You, uh, you ever drink the pisco sour, amigo? No. Will it help? Well, they do not solve the case for you, but they make you happier about being worried. Well, maybe we'd better order doubles. It's confusing, the Alder house... What do you think? Keep him alive, Alder says. But that's the only word you can get out of him. You feel the thing I mentioned yesterday, the, the, the tension, the strangeness? The only ones I've met are Alder and his daughter. You haven't met uh, Mrs. Alder, any of the others? Why? Mm, they got home late. After the shooting? Way after. Interesting. Oh, sure. It could have been any of them out on that slope. I do not worry about you, amigo. You will do fine. Well, I... Well, here's something else interesting. Alder doesn't want me to question any of them about that shot. Oh? Huh? You noticed there was no complaint to your office about the murder trial. I noticed. 
Because Aldo wanted it that way. Like I say, interesting. Ah, hey, gracias, waiter. You sip that, amigo. See if it does not help. It's good? Oh, very nice. It will be nicer. Just give it time. You, uh, you still have the Senor Billy Alder on your mind, eh? Yeah. Have another sip. Jefe. See? There's something else in my mind. I mean, you got to learn to relax, Johnny. You mentioned Mrs. Alder a few minutes ago. Seemed surprised I hadn't met her. What are you thinking of? Just that uh, you living at the house. No, Jefe, it was more than that. I mean, God, you are imagining. Come on, come on now, level with me. I'm far enough out in left field as it is. Write it off as professional courtesy, huh? You are a pretty nice-looking fellow, amigo. Don't snow me. Just I am me... simply trying to answer your question, Johnny. Mrs. Alda, how shall we say it? Uh, it does not make her angry to be seen in the company of a handsome man. I see. What's Mr. Alder's reaction? The elders must be people of breeding. If they have a quarrel, it is not in public. Thanks. But at the risk of seeming ungrateful, you could have mentioned that yesterday. It's a pretty good department, the Caracas police, amigo. You know why? Because I teach them always one thing at a time. Comprende? <laughs> Mucho, amigo. Come on. We eat, then we get back to the lab. If they have not finished, I fire everybody. Expense account item six, $14.85. Valesquez drank enough Pisco Sours to float the Normandy. Back at the police lamp, I wished I'd kept pace with him, because all they could tell from the bullet was that it had come from a Luger. And Valesquez pointed out there must be a couple of thousand Lugers in Caracas. I headed back for the Alder house at La Guerra. Unless the members of that happy household slept all day, somebody should be alive and stirring. And they were people I wanted to meet badly. But I almost didn't make it. As I approached the main gate, I noticed another car parked along the side of the road about 50 feet from it. Suddenly, it roared into life, shot forward, screamed to a stop, and cut me off, almost piling me into the entrance pillars. You darn fool, what's the matter with you? Plenty. You know who I am, Dollar? I know this. If you ever try a stunt like that again, I'll ram those pearly teeth right down your throat. Tough guy, huh? There's an easy way of finding out. But we'll get to that in a minute. I ask you if you knew who I am. Sure I do. Paul Kincaid, the lad who was smooching with Billy Alder's daughter yesterday. You taking bows? You just couldn't wait to tell Alder about it, could you? Your girl's been telling you lies, Kincaid. I just happen to be there. If you don't want to be seen, don't neck in doorways. Now, just a minute, Dollar. And speaking of people in wrong places, I thought you were a foreman in the oil fields. I don't see any derricks on the Alder property. I took the day off so I could come over and see you. Well, you getting a good look? Yeah. And I still think Alder hired you to keep Peggy away from me. Now, you keep out of my head, Dollar. What are you staring for? Well, now, everybody's full of wild ideas today. I just had one that maybe isn't so wild. Like maybe you just ad-libbed a reason for being here. And the real one is to sneak out on the slope and see if you can't find an empty Luger shell. What? There has to be one out there, you know. You saying I took that shot at Alder? I don't know. How bad do you want to marry into the Alder money? <laughs> Saw the punch coming, slipped it and threw my own. It was a dilly while it lasted. It lasted too long. You get a set of arms working in an oil field. He had them all right. And those punches hurt. So I went to judo. Even then he was tough. I guess I better get in shape. Or take up accounting. A look in the car mirror made one thing clear. I couldn't take a face like that through the front door. When I reached the house, I skirted it, managed to get to the service entrance without scaring the life out of anyone. Here, my little gift to Nacho Gomez, Cedar Adam Phi, began to pay off. He hustled me up to my room by the back stairs, and without waiting to be asked, he got busy with bandages and things. You, you win, senor? You, oh. Would you believe it if I said yes? Only through politeness, I think. Oh, oh, perdone, me, senor. That, that one was pretty deep. Caray. Yeah, what's the matter? I was just thinking, if you really win, I hate to see the loser. Thanks, but I can do it without seeing him again. That is about the best I can do, senor. Yeah, well, okay, thanks. Oh, no, it's nada. Con su permiso, senor. Sure, I... just tell me one thing, will you? Is anything going on downstairs? Well, how, how do you mean, senor? Well, that racket we hear coming up. The racket? 
Oh, you mean El Mantante. Mantante? The bullfighter? The finest matador in the world, senor. Did you not know he's the guest of the house? He's staying here? Oh, si. The senor and senora Alder, they're big aficionados. They love the corrida. New style, isn't it? Finding bulls in the house? <laughs> no, senor. Mantante, he just give a, how you say, a, a demonstration of the passes with the cape, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, it's beautiful. Why you not go down and watch, senor? You see, you will enjoy. It's lovely, the fine bullfighter. Anybody ever ask the bull about that? After Nacho's gentle ministrations and a quick change of clothes, I must confess I look slightly more like a human being again. Uh, slightly. Anyhow, I wandered downstairs, headed for the huge living room. And it was like walking into another world, alive and pulsating to the music from a record player. Five or six people stood around, hypnotically beating time, their eyes glued to the great El Mantante, a handsome Spaniard who skillfully worked a bullfighter's cape in the center of the floor. Nacho hadn't exaggerated. Montante was beautiful to watch. But the feeling wasn't unanimous. Billy Alder and his daughter Peggy were the only people in the room I knew. And though they beat time with the others, they both shared the same expression on their faces. Intense dislike for the man with the cape. As I shifted my attention to them, a woman tore reluctant eyes away from the matador and moved quietly toward me. She wasn't really beautiful, but tremendously chic, for want of a better word. And that made her seem beautiful. I'm Constance Alder, Mr. Dollar. Welcome to our home. Well, thank you, Mrs. Alder. I'm afraid I've been negligent as a hostess. Oh, we've just missed connections, that's all. Charmingly put. Do you mind if I wait to introduce you to the others when Montante's finished? No, of course not. Please go on back. Don't worry about me. I'm doing fine. Thank you. I watched her as she crossed the room, then realized that someone else was doing exactly the same thing, her husband, Billy Alder. Only the look on his face was the same glaring dislike with which he'd favored the cape-wielding matador. Interesting. Then after a long moment, Constant Alder moved quietly out of the room, as though not wishing to disturb the others. The performance was still going strong, and after about five minutes, I moved out onto the patio, stood looking down at the La Guerra Harbor. Because it was on my mind, I stared down at the spot on the slope from which the Luger had been fired, and I saw that someone was there, awkwardly searching the ground. A moment later, they straightened up, moved a few feet to continue the search. Even in the late afternoon sun, there couldn't be any mistake in the search's identity. It was Constance Alder. Now here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, two sides of the same old yarn. And whichever side you choose, you've got to call it wrong. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Tony Barrett, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>